Imagine yourself on a ship sailing across the Atlantic Ocean when suddenly, the sky disappears. Clouds descend like a thick gray curtain so thick you can't see beyond a few meters. The wind begins to blow with such brutal force that the ropes on deck make terrifying noises as they try to break free. The waves, which were small minutes ago, now grow to the size of five-story buildings. The ship begins to tilt, to move in a way that makes your stomach churn. You inevitably think, how is this gigantic ship not sinking at this very moment? How can a steel structure remain afloat when colossal waves hit it with the force of an explosion? How can pilots keep a 300-ton ship on course when nature is literally trying to turn it upside down? You would think that a ship should simply disappear beneath the waters. You would think it was impossible to maintain any control in such extreme conditions. But it doesn't disappear. The ship rocks. It moves. It echoes with the sounds of metal protesting against immense forces, but it remains afloat. It continues on course. It will reach its destination. How is this possible? How did engineers manage to design a structure capable of withstanding forces that seem absolutely uncontrollable? Today we will reveal this extraordinary secret that keeps cargo ships afloat even when the storm seems to want to lift them and launch them into the air. You will not only understand exactly how ships manage to stay afloat in extreme storm conditions conditions but you will also see the most sophisticated and counterintuitive engineering that makes a ship virtually impossible to sink before understanding how ships weather storms we need to understand a fundamental truth about what makes a ship float a ship doesn't float because it's light a 300 ton ship is extremely heavy it's made of massive steel it floats because it's filled with air. Most of a ship's volume is empty space, filled with air. The steel is distributed only at strategic points, in the outer walls, in the compartments, in the support structures. When you put all that steel in the form of an air-filled ship in the middle of the water, Archimedes' principle kicks in. The ship displaces an amount of water that weighs exactly equal to the weight of the entire ship. That's what keeps the ship afloat. But that's just basic physics. The real engineering begins when you face a storm. When the waves start crashing, when the wind starts blowing, when nature starts trying to destroy your ship. Then you discover whether the ship was designed correctly or not. For centuries, ships regularly sank in storms. Merchant ships disappeared with all their crew and cargo. The number of ships lost in storms was so high that marine insurance was extraordinarily expensive. Ship owners lived in constant fear. Sailors risked their lives every time they embarked on an ocean voyage because the possibility of never returning was real. But it wasn't because there was no solution. It was because the solution wasn't well understood. Engineers of the past built ships by intuition and experience, not by a scientific understanding of how waves interact with hulls. This desperate need to keep ships afloat in adverse conditions led modern engineers to develop a series of ingenious solutions that radically transformed maritime safety. The first solution is so simple it almost goes unnoticed. The whole design, a modern ship, isn't built with a straight, flat old dot. Cuts through the water, like a knife. A hull is designed with a very specific shape that allows the ship to move through the waves in a controlled and predictable way. The bow, the front part of the ship, is wide and rounded, not sharp. This wide shape allows the ship to ride the waves smoothly instead of crashing violently into them. As the wave approaches the bow, the hull pushes the water to the sides gradually, lifting the ship gently. If the bow were sharp, the ship would hit the wave directly, creating violent impacts that would damage the structure. But the rounded hull dissipates this energy. The stern, the rear part of the ship, is also carefully designed. It has a specific angle that allows the water to flow smoothly around the propeller, maintaining maximum efficiency even in turbulent waves. The key is understanding that a modern ship is essentially a series of engineering compromises. You want the ship to be fast, but you also want it to be stable in waves. You want it to carry a lot of cargo, but you also want it to float high enough so that waves don't get in. Engineers balance all these factors through complex mathematical calculations. The result is a hull design that looks almost random to the untrained eye, but is actually the result of decades of optimization. But the hull design is only the first step. The second step is the ship's internal structure. A modern ship 
is not just a hollow shell floating on the water. It is divided into multiple watertight compartments. Watertight means that each compartment can be isolated from the others by doors that can be closed. If a section of the ship is damaged by a wave and water starts to enter, that section can be isolated and the rest of the ship continues to float. This division into compartments is so important that there is international regulation dictating how many compartments a ship should have, depending on its size. A large ship should be able to lose two or even three adjacent compartments and still remain afloat. The mathematics of this is extraordinary. If you have a ship 180 meters long divided into 10 compartments, and each one has the capacity to float, then you can lose up to three entire compartments and the ship will not sink. Technically, a ship can be severely damaged with three sections completely filled with water and still be afloat and sailing towards the nearest port. This security redundancy is what prevents disaster. The third crucial element is the water ballast system. Ships carry water in special tanks called ballast tanks. These tanks can be filled with water or emptied as needed. Why would a ship carry extra water? To maintain balance, when a ship unloads its cargo, it becomes very light and begins to float very high in the water. Ships floating too high are unstable and capsize highly when waves hit them. Therefore, when unloading, the ship fills its ballast tanks with ocean water. When completely emptied of cargo, but with full ballast tanks, the ship remains at the correct depth and maintains its stability. When loading new cargo, the ship pumps the ballast back into the ocean. This ballast system allows a ship to maintain its stability in virtually any condition. But there's more. A ship in a storm isn't just dealing with waves coming from one direction. Waves come from multiple directions simultaneously. The wind comes from one direction. The swell coming from afar comes from another. The result is ah. Chaotic water surface with waves intersecting. A ship in such conditions is being pulled in multiple directions at once. How does it not capsize? Here comes the fourth element, hull stability. A ship is not just buoyant, it is designed to be stable. This means it has a low center of gravity. Most of a ship's weight is at its base, especially the engines, fuel, and cargo that goes downwards. The top is relatively light, this means that when a wave tries to tilt the ship, physics works to restore balance. The weight of the base tries to pull the ship back to an upright position. The lower the center of gravity, the more stable the ship. A properly designed ship can tilt up to 30 degrees and still return to an upright position without assistance. A ship in a hurricane is experiencing tilts that reach 15, 20 degrees. That's well within the safety limit. The fifth element is as important as all the others. The knowledge and experience of the captains. A modern captain doesn't just navigate routes dictated by the GPS system. A captain constantly studies weather forecasts. When a storm is detected, the captain can alter course to avoid the worst of it. They can reduce speed. They can change the angle of approach so that the waves hit the ship more favorably. An experienced captain can steer a ship through a storm in a way that minimizes the impact. Technically, a ship can be sent directly through the worst of a hurricane, but a captain would never do that if they had. An alternative. Captains have between 20 and 40 years of experience. They know the behavior of their ships intimately. They know exactly how the ship will react in different conditions. This experience is irreplaceable. A computer system cannot make the same decisions as an experienced captain because it lacks intuition. It lacks the accumulated experience gained over decades navigating in all kinds of conditions. Although technology has evolved extraordinarily over the last hundred years, the fundamental principles of how ships weather storms have remained the same. Steamships of the late 19th century had well-designed hulls and watertight structures. Modern ships have the same principles, but with much better optimization. Computers allow engineers to calculate hull behavior and waves with absolute precision. Modern materials are more resistant. Navigation systems are much better, but the fundamental laws of physics that keep a ship afloat in a storm? Tosse remain exactly the same. A modern ship can weather a storm that would sink a ship from a hundred years ago, not because it violates the laws of physics, but because the applied engineering is superior, there are extraordinary stories of ships that have weathered apocalyptic storms and remained afloat. There are accounts of ships that were completely capsized by a giant wave 
and repaired themselves because the engineering was so perfect. There are documented cases of ships carrying hundreds of tons of cargo in conditions so adverse that they seem impossible, and yet they arrive safely at their destination. These aren't accidents. They aren't luck. They are the result of brilliant engineering combined with knowledge accumulated over centuries. The next time you see a ship sailing on a cloudy day with large waves, remember that you are seeing the result of centuries of technological evil. Remember that the ship is equipped with multiple safety systems. Remember that it is being piloted by someone with decades of experience. Remember that the engineering that keeps it afloat is so sophisticated that it would have been considered impossible just a hundred years ago. If you've made it this far and are fascinated by how ships manage to face the most brutal forces of nature, now is the perfect time to like this video. A simple click that takes half a second of your time helps the algorithm show more content like this to other curious people. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, now is definitely the time to do so. Turn on notifications too, because new videos unveiling the secrets of the world arrive regularly. And leave a comment below. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt real fear of nature? Or is this your first time understanding how engineers manage to defy the most powerful forces on the planet? Share your stories and thoughts. But before you go, I see there's a video playing on your screen now. Click on it and continue discovering more fascinating mysteries surrounding the world of engineering and technology.